Hello, this is Duncan McPherson with Pareto Systems. Thank you very much for seeing the merit in joining this conversation. I'm very excited not only to share this information with you, but I get to do it with my good friend, Chris Jepson, co-author of the Advisor Playbook with me, currently working on the Blue Square Method and heading up just an incredible team of practice management specialists at First Trust Portfolio. So Chris, thanks very much for carving out this time. Hey, I'm absolutely excited to be able to dig deeper. I think what this next few minutes entails is going to be incredibly helpful for the unbelievably volatile markets that we're experiencing. And uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing with you how a number of advisors are, are running into this. This is, uh, this is, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Well, absolutely. And as you can see from the title, uh, I've said this, I don't know how many times to a financial advisor client of ours, I've said, this is why you became a financial advisor right here. So we want to share this from the field. This isn't a lecture. This isn't theory. I don't even want to call this ideas. This is open source, crowdsourced information uh, after a couple of weeks of intense, I mean, the velocity of conversation that we've had. Uh, throughout this. And among other things, I mean, uh, we want to provide some optimism and some hope, but not false hope. Uh, things you can do. And I had a conversation just prior to this call, Chris. I haven't shared this with you. But I said to the advisor, I said, it's moments like this, we got to remember who we are and what we stand for and what we believe in. I'm Canadian, you're American. Both our nations have been incredibly resilient. And I believe this period is going to be incredibly revealing for all of us. I mean, you said it best yesterday. You said to me, this is why I became a coach. To, to be that calming voice and to navigate people through this, and you've already seen results. And I, I love that, that feedback right now. And just to give context, for those that are watching this down the road or in a replay, to give you an idea where we're at, uh, right now we're, we are, the talk today is the Trump bump is erased. All the gains have, have been lost. And, uh, I, and I'm sure you are and having calls regularly with advisors and to, and I want everyone to realize that, that from where I come from, it's good for you to know, my perspective is this, one of, uh, of empathy and one that is also uh, sympathetic for, to, to what is going on. I, I got off the phone with a, a substantial uh, multi-billion dollar team yesterday, and, uh, and it was real. Uh, one of his clients said, uh, you know, hey, we had 11 million and we now have 10. And she said to him, she says, uh, she says, Mike, I'm scared. And, and that's real. And, and different clients are reacting differently here. And we understand that, but there will be some common ideas to share with you on how to uh, look to this opportunity to be that, not just that, that sounding board, but to remember, and you're going to hear this regularly, that it is in it is in these markets, the most volatile of markets, that your referability is its highest. And that's without question the topic of money. I mean, in the last three days, I'm sure this has happened to you, Duncan. I mean, I've got my home builders called me uh, asking ideas. I've got my landscapers talk to me. We have uh, friends coming out of everywhere. I'm getting a text from a from an author of a, a previous work that I worked on and talked to for a year. And uh, we're there. We're at the point now where people want that direction. And this is why both Duncan and I have chosen the field of, of coaching and consulting advisors is in these moments when we believe that what we share with you next is needed. And that begins with, as you can see on this title page, remember your purpose, stick to the plan, and trust the process. Know what your purpose is to begin with. Be able to show me your plan 
and don't allow the emotions and volatility of the day to deviate you from your process. This begins with that most important mindset. And I love the analogy uh, that you used yesterday, Duncan, when we were uh, doing some other, some other coaching together of the first responder. I mean, that mindset of the bell has rung, the house is on fire, and uh, we've had 10 years of cleaning the trucks. You know, <laughs> we've done enough tours with the kindergartners to show them the station. The bell's now rung. How do we respond? And it is in this exact moment that three years, three months, three weeks, for the life of the remainder of the relationship, this will be a pivotal moment. They will remember this conversation. And we talk about uh, a number of you have, I'm sure everyone's gone through their call rotation to their best clients and, and all clients and then past prospects and, and the like. And you, and you might have felt, eh, I probably could have done better with that or it didn't come out quite as I, as I had it in my mind's eye. That's okay. Uh, this is a, this is an ongoing process and we, we will be providing you today some content to touch on them again, because you can't talk to them enough. Not now. It's interesting. You and I had some uh, interactions late in the day yesterday. I worked hard. You worked hard. I drove home. I was exhausted. I was spent, but it was good fatigue. Right, because I knew there was a lot of value in, in those exchanges. But I pulled down our street into our neighborhood. Several of our neighbors were out on the street talking. I could immediately read their body language. Fear. And I was instantly rejuvenated because I said, my job is to be the fountain, not the drain, and to dis dismiss or at least put fear into proportion and perspective. And uh, I walked out and uh, they looked at me and they said, hey, how's it going? And I walked out with a jump in my step and I said, tomorrow's the first day of spring. I'm euphoric. I could see the body language change and they drew toward me. Now, I'm not special. It was just so disruptive to what they were expecting from another person in this episode. And it's just galvanized, like it validates the importance of leadership and the steady hand. And this, is, and this, this, this leads us right to that, doesn't it? I mean, this is kind of our first slide. And you've heard this, everyone's heard this before, but just to serve as a reminder that 80% of what you communicate with clients will not be in the words that you use. That is not what will be the message that is felt or received. It will be in the conviction that you bring. And, and I, a similar incident right now, it's uh, with complete sincerity. I, yeah, I am uh, an American, and, and, but I think that we, we have that same spirit of is, hey, we've seen worse and we've overcome, right? This is uh, either people are going back to Starbucks in three months or no one will drink coffee again. I mean, this is the decision we have to make. We have to stand for something in this moment, and it's in standing for something that they will feel that conviction and, and ready to, to hand over the reins of responsibility and decision making. And it begins with this, this mindset, right? Well, it's interesting. I don't know if you remember, but back in the early 2000s, when uh, Buffett and Berkshire purchased Wrigley's and Gillette, there was a lot going on then in the world, very similar to this, only different. But he was asked, uh, a little worried that maybe you overpaid or bit off more than you could handle in this period? And he goes, I'm confident that Americans are going to continue to chew gum and their facial hair is going to continue to grow. I'm fairly confident. That's great. And I'm like, how? Powerful. Powerful. So let's move. Okay, so there we are. Let's just talk for a moment. We're gonna. We're, we're not gonna talk about talking about things. We're gonna get into some specific actionables in a moment. But it starts. It starts with us, right? So what's your mindset? Uh, Epictetus 
said it best about 2,000 years ago, circumstances don't make the man, they reveal him. And you'll have to pardon the gender reference there, but you know, you get to catch the spirit. This is a revealing time, and you know, you and I were talking about this. It's, it's revealed three types of advisors, right? They're the advisors who are making things happen. There are the advisors who are kind of watching things happen. And then there are the advisors who are wondering what on earth has happened. And they're shell-shocked. And I believe that the path to self-actualization, the best version of ourselves, is a road with a lot of adversity. And for what it makes of us to get through it. And ultimately, at the end of the day, we want this window to serve you, because you're right, it will be etched, and some indelible connections will be made. Epictetus also said, it's not what happens to you that matters, it's what you do about it. So to your point, Chris, you mentioned that undoubtedly everybody listening in here has already had at least one meaningful rotation calling their clients, and maybe you kind of winged it a little bit, and you wish you could have a redo. It's not a one-off transaction. This is a fluid and dynamic process, of course, to galvanize existing relationships and to position yourself for advocacy. Money has never been more topical in the last 15 years than it is right now. And when a client is given the opportunity to wave your flag, we want them to be so well prepared. The stage of readiness is there. And remember advocacy. A client is not going to introduce a friend to you because they're trying to help you grow your business. They feel they're doing their friend a disservice if they don't make the introduction. They're advocates for your value. They're advocates for the friend and the unmet needs that have just revealed themselves. I mean, how do the people who've been doing it themselves on a robo platform I mean, who are they talking to right now? Who are the people who are maybe just sort of somewhat disillusioned or disconnected with their advisor in general, and now it's revealed so much? Let's look at this as an opportunity, uh, and, and let's look at some actions you can take. Yeah, and, th and that takes us to what is your gap, right? Okay, but what, what, what is your gap? Let's, let's get to that. Yeah, let's get there, but let's just go to the next slide. I just want everybody to know that the value of this conversation is going to begin at the end, okay? We're not just going to bombard you now and say good luck. That knowledge bank, uh, you'll have a, a link to that. Every single resource that we create over the next couple of weeks, we're going to put there as a vault for you to open to employ. Uh, to translate into results. There's video, there's this webinar will be archived. You can share it with anybody, okay? We're in this together, we're a community. Let's, uh, let's embrace some co-opetition co here. Let's cooperate as we're trying to achieve our goals. We're also gonna put in some peer sharing uh, based on what advisors are, are sharing with us. But yeah, to your point, let's go to the next slide and talk about gaps. So, Again, very revealing talking to people. I've, my phone's been blowing up, people asking to talk. My coaches have been asking and scheduling um, appointments with clients. You know the three different categories. Some are upbeat, and I get off the phone, I'm feeling better talking to them. Some are concerned. And again, it's, it's not that they're worried, I guess. They're, they are just concerned. They're just being mindful of this, but we do need to disrupt them in the conversation. And the question I've been asking when I'm trying to get someone's attention is I will just ask that question. Again, I'll pause and I'll just say, hey, what's your gap? What's your gap? And as you can imagine, there's a pause on the receiving end and they say, what do you mean? I go, look, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with anything you're doing. There's just some gaps that I think you could identify and address. So let's just have that conversation. Let's talk about some gaps. And that's where the acronym comes up. You know, the first G in this acronym is the, is the G for gratitude. 
Now, why would we why would we include that in a moment like this? Why is that so significant? If you speak to psychologists today and any professional that deals with people that are going through or have gone through traumatic events, the first thing that they would suggest to you is that you listen and sympathize. Recognize that you as the listener might also be feeling some of this anxiety because it's there. I mean, you're also going through this. Your account is also gone down. Your, your, what you're invested in with your firm, whatever, uh, has also taken a hit. If you recognize that you also might be feeling anxiety so that you can come from a position of, of bringing them back to center, the best way to do that is to have that heartfelt understanding of being grateful for what it is that we do have. I mean, after all, we have our health, most of us, right? We have not gotten infected yet. We have a great family. You've got a home. You, you're what half the world lives on less than a dollar a day. Let's, let's recognize and count our blessings as they, as, as we see them. And I think that puts you kind of in that mindset to address the, the next practical moments. If, if we jump right in to giving you the actions and, and the dialogue without first talking about the mindset that you approach it from, you, it, it won't fall the way that it should. This, it has to first come from a sympathetic and understanding heart and one that's also grateful for what it is that we still have and that we've been blessed with. So I, I would add that as that first step. Yeah, and it's it's so interesting. I mean, my wife's at home. Both my kids are at home. So I've got one working, one at school. They're both doing everything from home. All kinds of dynamics there, but it's, you know, my wife is sending me a picture of all the things that she's doing at home. Just little things that she's been putting off and, you know, watching yoga videos on YouTube and just slowing life down for a second. And these things, what occurs to me is the best way to take impeccable care of your clients is take impeccable care of yourself. Use this as a gift to just basically assess a few things and regenerate. I mean, get a little more sleep, get a little more exercise, eat a little bit better. Um, you, you can't pour from an empty cup. And, and, and I'm, you talked about this yesterday, Chris. I mean, I am, completely, absolutely convinced that capitalism is going to plow right through this in time. I'm one guy. I get into a drive through to buy a coffee. I give the lady at the window 20 bucks and I say, pay for the five cars behind me. And I take off. A uh, little bagel shop down the road, bought some bagels, gave her the biggest tip I've ever given in years of going there. And I could see it in her eyes just a beautiful Persian couple at uh, Mount Royal Bagels there. You know, my wife calls me up yesterday and says, you know, I, I'm going to take the boys. We're going to go uh, donate blood. Can you come with us? You know, I, I'm just seeing these actions, you know, and you would call it an attitude of gratitude, right? Right. But ultimately, it, we, we've got to have what actions? What are the action steps that we can take right now? What What is it that we can do? And, and, I've got to share, and this is Duncan that uh, I've got to give you credit for, but I've used with all the teams that I, I coach, and I would strongly encourage if you hear one thing from today's webinar, you take one thing away, I want you to remember this. Ultimately, it's going to be what you say in the very moment that you have contact with the client. And when that client calls in, the first action will be, what is it that they're saying? How are you doing? What is the latest? What is your research saying? How are you feeling? How are you getting through this? Can you believe what's happening? I can't believe what I saw here. What do you think about? These will be the introductions to a question that I would strongly encourage you at this moment. You're going to leave a, an indelible brand that will, that will last the remainder of the relationship, and it's this. How am I doing? Awesome. This is why I became a financial advisor. Let that just sink in. 
just by responding in that manner, if you think about what does that say to someone, this is why I became a financial advisor. I didn't become a fireman to just clean trucks every day. It was in this moment that we can really bring our value. This is why you have me. This is three months, six months, a year from now, that client's going to remember that statement. This is why they became a financial advisor. That must mean that's why I have one. This is why I have a financial advisor. It's in these moments, 1% a year. The market moved 13 a couple days ago for the day. And you paid 1% for a year of direction and advice in these markets. We are absolutely, I believe, in the moment of, of truth. This is where we win in this moment with this language. I love, and that's why we entitled this webinar, This is Why You Became a Financial Advisor. So let that be your brand within a greater brand as a messenger that lead with that message. And before we go into further actions, let's round out GAP with the P. We want you to lead with purpose, okay? We understand your technical ability. You've got the credentials. This moment is not about core competency and wealth management. This is everything to do with relationship management. You think of the art and science of that 1%? This is the artisan. This is the relationship management. We want you to lead with purpose, not data. I mean, listen, First Trust has got an unrivaled bench and the data they provide is invaluable. I see it on LinkedIn all the time. I mean, I, it, in and of itself, it's just, it's rational. I just, what Chris is saying there is, when you're given the opportunity, lead with purpose and then punctuate it with the data. Somebody gives you an opportunity, and it, it could be a client, it could be a friend, a neighbor, a family member, a strategic partner, a former client. They ask you how you're doing? Exactly this what he said. This is why. And I, I, I would I'd encourage it. And the purpose, uh, be clear on what that is, right? I mean, have, have your plan. This is why we developed the process was in moments like this. You can substantiate it with data later. I mean, we know when the market's down 25, 30%, that every three, five, 10 year period, our average annual return was X. And, and this is why I became a financial advisor is to take advantage of the opportunities and the, and the dislocations that present themselves. Does that mean, because I'm not timing this, and let me be clear, uh, does it mean we don't go lower? I don't know that, but that's also part of our process. For when it does, we'll stick to that purpose, which is providing predictability to your long-term outcome. I like that right now. That This conversation of we don't manage to short-term volatility, we've never had a client retire on short, short-term volatility, but every, re, every client we have has retired on long-term outcomes. And that's why our process is built around exactly that. That just gives them, it, it, you could just tell just the stress that's, comes off from that. You can you can feel the apprehension start to melt away. And listen, we are not in happy high notes and glass half full here. We get the reality. I talked to a friend of mine, a financial advisor. He got a huge referral in January, four million dollar client who today is a three million dollar client. So from January to now, I, I could feel it in the conversation. And then you know, another advisor is telling me about how much money he personally lost. And, you know, I, but I said to him, I said, look, invest the past into the future. You, I'm not downplaying it. It's real, but you've lost your keys. Like, you're, you'll find them. It, it'll come back. I mean, relative to where you were in 2017, relative to where you were in 2010, the point of purpose is, okay, so gratitude Appreciate what you have while you aspire to what you want. And I know all of you want some goals to be set and aspirations. I told a client of ours in Florida, I said, Eric, your five-year plan is now 18 months when we come out of this because you're going to emerge. And he said, I, I completely believe it. I know you all aspire to things. Just appreciate what you have when it comes to purpose. How much we have and how much we earn does not make us valuable until we become. 
and your impact in the shadow you cast right now, who are you becoming right now? I just, we just want you to be mindful of that. But let's go deeper into actions. Let's go to the next uh, slide. Let's, let's expand on the conversation. And I'll tell you something, this is not theory. Uh, sample size is now big enough where I've had advisors come back to me and say, I cannot believe how simplistic this little concept is and yet how impactful it is. So after the, the conversation has calmed down or, or just, just sort of settled into a group, and remember, how do you allocate your time? I mean, start with clients who are the most deserving. You have two addressable audiences, those who deserve you, those who need you. Start with the most deserving. They're the perfect client, right? They're your ideal clients. Start there. And then who needs you? Well, right now, everyone needs you. Anybody needs you. So friends, neighbors, you know, former clients, strategic partners. So, so go through your entire uh, phone list in your phone. Call everybody. And obviously, as you receive calls, tell them this is why you became a financial advisor. As the conversation just sort of settles in, then just say to the person on the phone, hey, uh, do you have a pen handy? And again, somewhat disruptive, right? And they'll say, uh, yeah. And if they say no, it's okay. You can tell them to do it in their mind's eye. But most people have a pen handy. And they'll say, hey, just, just do this for me. So it's not just what you're saying. It's now it's experiential. Now they're involved in this. And believe me, when you hang up the phone, they've got this to look at long after the call's ended. So just tell them, just say, hey, just do me a favor. Draw a two circle Venn diagram, just two hor circles horizontally interconnected. And listen, I don't want to oversimplify any of this. I just want to remind you of something. And you've probably seen this before in our conversation, but just say to your client or whoever you're talking to, just say, hey, First thing I want you to remember, throughout all of this noise, this is like the noise canceling headphones here. Throughout all of this chaos, we never lose sight for what matters in the lives of our clients, our team members, and everybody we interact with. We never lose sight of that. We also don't lose sight for what we can control. I mean, there's a lot going on right now, but remember, it's not the wind. It's the set of the sale. So what matters to everybody I'm talking to right now? What matters to me? Money's a means to an end. And then just tell them to write form underneath matters. And just walk them through. And just remind them, you've got goals with your family. You've got goals with your business. You've got goals with your bucket list. That's why it matters. Money is the how. We never lose sight of that. Okay? And then as far as what we can control, just remember, what we can control is we stay true to our philosophy, we stick to our planning strategy, and we don't stray from our process. And then take, just say to them, take your pen and put it right in between those two circles, color that in, because right now, that's where we live, right there. That takes what, Chris, 90 seconds? Right. And I love, you can even get, uh, you know, topical, right? This little center area, this is where we live. This is, this is what we can control and what matters to you. But as you can see outside this circle of control, we can write a number of things. We can talk about corporate debt, the election, the, uh, we can talk about the coronavirus. We can talk about a lot of things that fall outside of our control. But, this is why I became a financial advisor is to understand what matters most to you and your family that we can also control and build around a predictable experience within that space. I just love the context, especially today. It's brevity, there's specificity, and it's proprietary. I can only get this from you, right? Now, here's the thing. You're all enlightened. Confucius said, don't give a man a fish, teach a man to fish. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. What you've just done is you've given that person the ability. It's like train the trainer. You've turned them into a protege, a representative of your philosophy and process. They'll take that to someone else. 
watch this. I'm a fortune teller. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to get an introduction in the next 30 days. You're going to call the rainmaker, the goose that laid that golden egg, and you're going to say, I really appreciate you introducing your friend to me. I got to tell you, we had an amazing conversation. What did you say? Like, what prompted this introduction? You watch. They're going to say, you know what? I just did the Venn diagram. I walked through form. I talked about what matters, what we control, and I felt great myself. But they looked at it and they said, I've never seen it explained so simply in my life. And that's what prompted the call. Okay? I love, love that. I also, uh, this, this morning, spoke to a friend of mine. He's a client at Goldman. And uh, he said, Chris, what are you buying? That's what he said to me. He goes, what are you buying right now? Did you buy yesterday? And, and I said to him, I go, I go, hold on. Are you serious? He goes, what? I, I'm just curious what you're buying. I go, you're serious, though. You want to know what I'm buying? I'm buying what it is that the process, the advisors I work with laid out that we should buy, and it was dictated by the volatility of the markets that ties into my family's long-term financial outcome. I do whatever is part of the process. I mean, are you kidding me? That, that, that it's about just finding where things are undervalued and then picking them? Wow, man. And you should have seen it. It, it, was, it was unbelievable, the, the reaction, but that's what is happening out there. No one's having this conversation, walking them through an actionable plan, a, a reiteration of what their philosophy and planning strategies are. This is that opportunity. Remember, it will never be more topical than it is right now. You know, I haven't been asked that question yet, but if I, what you just prompted for me there, if somebody calls me and asks me what I'm buying, here's what I'm going to say. I'm not buying products. I'm buying into a process. I'm sticking to the process. I'm not straying from the plan. I'm going to stick to the plan. I'm going to stick to the process. I'm just. Are you pulling cash? Are you pulling any cash out? How much cash do you have at your house? My goal like, oh, is that where we're at now? Anyway, let's we let's keep let's keep rolling. So so the theme of that is professional contrast relative to the rest of the world. This is your ability to elevate so far beyond. And there's a combination here of AI, EI, right? High tech, high touch. Okay, so AI is great. We all love technology. But the one thing AI will never have is emotional intelligence. So, so that's the first part. But let's shift from vapor to paper for a second because a lot of this is conversational. Today, as we do this call, it's first day of spring. I love it. We just had, what, an 11-year autumn harvest? Thereabouts, 10 years, nine years, okay? And now here we are, severe winter. It's, it's pretty, uh, yeah, it's real. But if you invest the past into the future, if you read John Kenneth Galbraith's book, A Short History of Financial Euphoria, 2,000 Years of Human Nature, spring always follows winter. Right, Chris, approximately how many times does spring follow winter? Approximately. Just every time, right? Yeah. So not trying to make light of it, but I would suggest you uh, send a greeting card and pay tribute as a metaphor to the season of spring. Now, this might not resonate with you. You live by the rules you set. I get it. I, I'm telling you right now, if you just send a, and, and by the way, that card is from Lavish Cards, uh, very good friends of ours, uh, live here in town uh, with me. And uh, that image, and uh, just a nice message, and they'll write a message for you too, but that just a nice message. And just a paint, and incidentally, on the Knowledge Bank, there's also um, uh, something taken from Jim Rohn about the seasons of life. So you can put in some, some phraseology into the card. Maybe you'll only send a card to the 20%. It's entirely up to you. Uh, some clients even enclose a little package of seeds in the envelope as a little lumpy mail just to really get someone's attention because, hey, as far as right now is concerned, pretty much everyone's at home. And uh, I do know they sort their mail over a garbage can, so that's going to be the first thing they open. 
It's definitely topical, and it's a way to just let them know you're still thinking about them when you say something and leverage the seasons, right? I think it's great to say there's no doubt we're experiencing a longer winter in the financial markets than most anticipated. But from my recollection, spring always follows winter, and we're looking forward to coming out of this with even more predictability around your family's financial outcomes. It, you yeah. can make so many great uh, great little messages around that and get them looking again at uh, what's most important. Future pacing, right? Well, okay, on that note, so Robert Louis Stevenson had a great quote. He said, focus more on the seeds you plant than on the harvest you reap. So that's just cause and effect. Focusing on what you can control is your activity. Send that card from the entire team. Remember Maslow's hierarchy. Maslow's hierarchy of, of needs and aspirations. People want to feel like they belong to something. It's not just you. Your clients trust you and your people and your practice and your process. So make sure the entire team signs that card just to activate that sort of communal belonging of we're in this together. And yes, spring is around the corner. I love that Stevenson quote. That's good. I hadn't heard that. It's all new. So uh, talk to Lavish on uh, the Knowledge Bank. There's a link to go and see their gallery. I love that image. And I've actually, believe it or not, got the image right here. That picture does it no justice when you hold this in your hands. It's almost three-dimensional. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so we talk about high touch. These are just things you can do over the course of the next coming weeks. High tech, high touch, high reach. Okay, so there's an old saying, right? It's more important to reach the people who count than to count the number of people you're reaching. Right, so if 80-20 prevails, if 80% of your business comes from 20% of your clients, spend 80% of your one-to-one -one time on the 20%. They're the most deserving. For the one to many, for the 80% of your clients who generate 20% of your business, go with a one to many mindset. I Twice today in consultations with clients, they're doing a series of conference calls, not a one-off, a series. Very little to do with the markets and specific um, data around what's going on. Some, but they frame every call in form. They're talking about what other clients are saying and doing and feeling around family. Like, for example, family. Okay, this is a great time to have a conversation with family members about money. Okay, and in, in other additional webinars coming up, Jackie Wilkie at First Trust does an amazing job talking about um, the family dynamics generationally, up and down the tree, family. Because they're all, they're all together right now, too. I mean, we should reiterate the point that these conversations, you're never going to have a more opportune time to get in touch with people that were mostly untouchable before, right? A lot of people are home, and uh, there's time. So I don't know how long this lasts. Let's l leverage it. You know, right now, I'm not traveling. You're not traveling. What a great time for us to work on our business, right? You and I creating content, writing, talking. If you've got clients yourself who are business owners, they're, they have an opportunity to shift from working in the business to working on the business. It's working on the business that elevates a client experience. It's working on the business that drives enterprise value. I know uh, we're missing some opportunity here business-wise in day-to-day working in the business, but it's a mindset, okay? Glass half full, half empty. I personally, I'm just happy I've got a glass, to be quite candid with you. I don't live off $6 a day. Every day for 50% of the people on planet Earth, it's survival, every day. They don't, the, the concept of an aspiration of going to Italy, I'm supposed to be in Italy right now. The concept of traveling on a vacation for many people, it's not, it doesn't even register. So. I'm putting it all in proportion. Again, that's just me. Don't want to sound like I'm lecturing. But frame your conference calls in form. Uh, Chris, you're going to do another webinar down the road on the dialogue and down markets. And 
you know, you're a master of the concept of creating an episode, telling a story to help somebody really conceptualize using social proof how something relates to them, right? Uh, we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to actually have that call, and that'll also be posted in the knowledge bank. And would it make sense? I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. Would it make sense that we have a sample of what one of some of these agendas look like for advisors that are going through these rotations and focusing on the emotional intelligence, the form, rather than on the the data? Should we provide uh, a sample of what one of those agendas looks like in the knowledge bank? Yeah, it's a great idea, and again, it's open source, right? So let's just uh, let's draw that out of our interactions and just load it up. Yep. Right. So the other thing you can see in the slide here is video. Uh, we're big fans of video. I do so much video, and I've got a lot of my clients now doing video. Think about what it actually does, not just what it is. Okay. First of all, you have evergreen video, something that can park on your website that will galvanize and competitor proof of clients because it's a connection, it's a touch. It's also a bridge because your clients can use your video as a bridge to introduce friends and family members to you. Remember, an endorsement is when a client says something nice about you. An introduction is when they take action and create a connection. So. Cascading video is your video blog, okay? Continuity, sequential, incremental over time. Evergreen is the stuff that parks. And again, we want you to archive all your video. We want you to turn everything you do into an intellectual property that's got some shelf life. So I've got many advisors who are doing video right now. Obviously, they know their way around compliance and they're, they're not, it's nothing promissory about performance or the future. It's just about uh, where we are and uh, our philosophy, our planning strategy, and our process. I'll just put in a little plug. There's a company called Idea Decanter. Uh, this crew, this is what they do. They create video for fee-for-service professionals, and they are lights out good. Bang for the buck and turnkey, bumper to bumper, pre-production, production, post-production, post and they know compliance, and they understand our philosophy and our approach as well. So I highly recommend, if you don't want to reinvent the wheel, I'm sure you could create your own video, but if you don't want to start from scratch, reach out to Idea Decanter, and uh, they're good friends of ours as well. We just want you to be the light. We want you to be the beacon. We want people to be able to see around a corner and, and see where this is going. And a lot of that you were saying in the beginning, uh, Chris speaks to the messenger as much as the message. So be and we don't, yeah, we don't want to leave you also with, you know, and we say this regularly. The real value of even today's webinar or webcast is the value begins when it's over, and having access to, uh, and if we could just show access to these resources. The first we would have you rem remember is the knowledge bank. For what it is that we're posting right now, that can be accessed here at ParetoAcademy.com. We will have four additional deep dive webinars, which will also be posted on here. And if I could just put a quick plug in, if you're not connected with Duncan on LinkedIn, then, then do so because Pareto Academy is putting out current, uh, really state-of-the-art uh, ideas and I. I would highly encourage you to, to connect with either Duncan or my, uh, both of us actually on LinkedIn. We'll be posting regular content uh, from both firms to help you through or navigate some of these kind of turbulent times we're in. And, and Chris and I exchange and you chime in and it's interesting, if I'm not mistaken, the last event you and I have done before the world stopped was together in Denver, right? And we, we put a yeah. picture of that up. Yeah, that's the vault picture at the beginning of the meeting. Yeah, right? for real, right? So, so within the Knowledge Bank, as you can see, uh, First Trust has a pretty good bench. Uh, so Jack Wilkie has a webinar coming up called Advising the Family Tree. And Kevin Bishop has a webinar called Beacon Branding. And this is your time to shine and achieve professional contrast. So we're just going to keep plowing stuff into the Knowledge Bank, into the vault, and um, 
just, just provide you some proven, actionable strategies that you can translate into results. So, so look for that. And again, LinkedIn, we're very, very active there. Uh, if you want to move to the next slide, and we'll rewind this down. If you want to put Pareto in your pocket, you can download an app from the App Store uh, or onto your Android. Just work on your business five minutes a day. Video, scripting, campaigns, it's all there. And uh, if you have any questions around navigation, getting access to anything, uh, then just track us down. You can see there's emails to both uh, Chris's team and the Pareto team there, uh, some toll-free numbers. You said it best, it's wise words, this is where we win. And by win, I mean strengthen relationships, achieve professional contrast, and convert clients into referral generating advocates. So clients who don't just endorse you and sing your praises, but advocates who take action. You know, Warren Buffett's partner, Charlie Munger, he said it best. He said, show me the incentive and I will show you the outcome. What's the incentive of advocacy? My incentive for introducing my friend to you, a financial advisor, is to help take care of my friend, okay? I care about you, I care about my friend, I see the alignment of interest, I make the introduction, I expect nothing in return, okay? That's what you can engineer right now using these resources. So, Chris, I really appreciate you making the time. I know you're a busy guy. Hey, hey man, we are, uh, we're humbled to be able to, to share anything that might be able to help people through these times. And if we can partner in a deeper way at First Trust, we say it all the time, whatever we can do to help you become more successful undoubtedly will resonate in a return uh, for us. And, and so our focus is you uh, all the time, always on, all the time. So thank you again, uh, Mr. and Ms. Advisor. Yeah, and I'm just going to close on that. As you know by now, there's not a bigger advocate for the financial advisor anywhere in this industry than First Trust Portfolios. Thank you. They know you're not just managing money. You're managing a business and you're managing people. And they apply the same level of importance to practice management and relationship management as they do to wealth management. And they're world class at all three. So I appreciate you and your team. I appreciate everybody who's uh, listened in. And if there's anything we can do, you know where to find us. Okay? So until then, take it easy. Make it a great day. Bye for now. Thanks, guys.